All right. Cocoa prices have jumped up to the highest level in 32 years. Um, delivery for September, for instance, is trading at about 2,465 British pounds per ton. So it's actually a boom period in the sector. What's Nigeria doing to capitalize on this? Well, at the moment, we, we are trying to cash in on that, but we believe that uh, Nigeria can do better. And that's why the direct the government, what the government is saying right now is quite, is good enough. If government can sustain what they have said, uh, it means that uh, a lot can be done in the farm, in terms of farming. Because the way things are now, most of the uh, farms are getting hold. And um, if we follow the new process the government is trying to put in place, it means that uh, Nigeria has a chance to really cash in on it. All right. Now, Nigeria, as we know, is the fourth largest uh, cocoa producer worldwide after Ivory Coast, Indonesia and Ghana. But we really haven't seen um, Nigeria maximize its potential and optimize what it can do. So what strategies are being looked at by way of boosting production, by way of what the federal government's new program entails? Well, that's, what's, uh, that's what I'm starting to say. Uh, government really need to encourage people to go into farming. Government need to put in the enabling environment for farming, and government need to provide uh, infrastructures so that people will be interested. Remember, if you are going into cocoa farming, you need three to four years, and uh, that's a long time for a lot of um, business entrepreneurs in Nigeria. So if government want people to really uh, do well, the direction that is trying to do um, to put things right now will do well for the people. Um, for example, if it's a concerted policy by the government to fund agriculture, to provide single-digit money, and also to provide other infrastructure that will attract the teeming population that are unemployed to in into cocoa farming. I believe that can change uh, things and make Nigeria do better and de-emphasize the focus on oil, which has been our main problem in Nigeria. All right, we also know that FTN cocoa processors, uh, their stock has risen 4.6%, and in Europe, uh, the processors have seen a rise of 12.7%. Uh, and obviously, this is in line with the rising prices. The challenge, though, is that the supply factors are very, very um, risky in the sense that um, many trees that have been planted have reached the 25-year life cycle and are not very productive. The main producer, the Ivory Coast, has seen lagging investments into the sector and so is not providing the market with as much as is needed. So we're seeing prices boom, but supply factors creating a real constraint. How are you going to navigate this terrain as Nigeria? Uh, well, um, for example, some years ago, one of the governors in the south-south in Nigeria deliberately did some policies that have uh, boosted production. I have from records that uh, south-south Nigeria can do some 40,000 tons of cocoa per annum. Uh, I believe if the southwest and other areas like the Middle Belt focus on this as well, this situation will uh, greatly help, help Nigeria, especially now that we know uh, in Nigeria that uh, over-reliance on the oil will not do us any good. And again, the population is increasing. Question that comes to mind, where are these people going to be? Where would they be engaged in if we don't develop other sectors like cocoa? Mm -hmm. We have that opportunity. The prices of cocoa are quite, is quite good. And uh, we see that like that for the next maybe number of years. And uh, the demand for cocoa products, I mean, the taste of people, especially when prosperity is coming in, is uh, yearning towards cocoa. So we believe that it's a thing that uh, government should pay attention to and uh, investors are ready. For example, cocoa processing in Nigeria is increasing now, unlike what it was some um, 20 years ago. We have over eight factories now in the country. All right, let's talk about selling cocoa internationally. We spoke earlier on with Mark Fitzjohn about the international futures uh, uh, market and speculation that's rife in that market. And that has also seen itself manifest in the cocoa uh, futures contract markets. People saying speculators pushed up the price. And right now, if you're looking to see fair value for cocoa, you're going to get a very unrealistic uh, picture. It's better to deal with the physical market. What's your view? Yes. The commodity, I mean, the fund managers are the reasons why the prices have just have, have moved up. Um, if people begin to deal with physical products, I mean, physical uh, market, I believe uh, the market will correct itself. Um, you will remember in 2008, during the height of the meltdown, um, a lot of uh, fund managers migrated into cocoa and therefore pushed up the prices to unprecedented levels. 
Now, because the market wanted to correct itself, it came down heavily and um, put so many people into trouble. But we believe that um, buyers and users of this product must deal with the physical product. There must be an harmony between the physical product and the theoretical product prices, which we are seeing in the international market. For us in the industry, we also try, we, we, we prefer to deal with uh, users now instead of selling through the commodity exchange as it used to be in the past.